Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. I am Julia Billen here at Warmly Yours, owner, chief bottle washer, and my lovely Sky sidekick here is Scott. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Say a little something about yourself. You're being way too modest. Oh, well, I'm the manager of technical support. So when everybody, any, anybody has questions, I'm one of the guys that usually answers it. And he's a car enthusiast. So if you have questions on that, we can take those as well. Brakes and tires, that's about it. <laughs> All right. Well, today we're actually going to be talking about how to install a floor heating system in less than a day. Um, and this is specifically for floating floors. So if it requires thin set or some other type of adhesive, this is not for you. Come back another another time. Right. This is this is nice and fast and easy. No glue, no thin set, no nothing. All right. And so that's why it's fast. And we want you to ask questions along the way. This is very interactive. Uh, we love that you join us live. Um, so ask a lot of questions. And we did get some uh, questions in advance. We're going to be answering those along the way as well. So you want to start us off? What are we going to be talking about? Give me the we, give me the overview. Well, the reason why we're here is we're going to be talking about floor heating. What a surprise. Yay. I know. And what we're going to be talking about is the environment heating system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be showing you an example install that we actually did. I like that because it makes it interesting. It's real yeah. stuff. And and uh, we're also going to talk about, uh, uh, you know, what did it cost? Mm -hmm. You know, how much does it cost to put in? So you're going cool. to get a pretty good idea of the size of the room and then what the cost is for that size of a room. Okay. So let's talk about floor heating in general. I think most of you guys out there already are somehow involved in the business um, so or, and are very familiar with us. So, But as a general overview, radiant heating, take it away. Well, what we're doing is we're actually heating from the floor. Yes. So you're not dealing with that vortex of hot, cool, cold hot, cool, cold air coming in rotating. from a furnace. Yeah, exactly. Right. There's no, there's no blowing wind. There's no, um, there's no uh, dust, dust, that sort of stuff. So allergens. Um, yeah, exactly. So what we're doing is we're showing you on the left side over here, we can see that you have a nice even heat throughout the room. It and the most, radiates. Yeah, and the most important thing is your toes are nice and warm. Yeah. I like okay? that. Okay. Because if you look at this side, your coat, your toes are getting the air after it's gone up to the top of the room, after mm -hmm. it's cooled off, and after it's sunk down to the bottom of the room, mm -hmm. that's when it gets to your toes. So yeah. you can see where your toes are going to be cold or your toes are going to be warm. I also get a lot of uh, static electricity. Mm -hmm. That's, be uh, that's so because your furnace is burning the air. Scorched it, air. Yeah, scorched air dries it out. Yeah. So whenever you're putting, that's a great point, because whenever you're working with wood or laminate or anything like that, uh, Debbie says that we don't have any sound. Uh, okay. Can anybody else hear us or is it just Debbie? Anybody else want to jump in there to let us know whether it's on our end? Okay, so Cheryl, Cheryl says sound. sound. So Debbie, you might just have to tweak one of your settings to uh, get that. It looks like we have sound going everywhere else. Um, okay, there we go. Thank you, Olivia. Olivia is the one that sits over there that you can't see. <laughs> She's keeping track of all that stuff. Our Vanna White. But what's great about uh, floor heating is that you can also uh, localize the heat. So if you're going to be in a specific room, you can make that room warm and let the other part of the house be cooler. Yeah. So you can actually turn your furnace down. Yeah, and a good example for me is um, my, my husband loves birds. So we have three birds, and that room always stays at a very nice 82 degrees, believe it or not. Mm. I'm talking ambient temperature. Mm -hmm. So it stays very warm. Um, but in the other areas of the home, clearly we don't want it that warm. So we have each room zoned on its own, own control. So we that's like a little Cosmo that we can kind of right. uh, engineer to whatever our comfort level is or the creatures we have in the room. Exactly. If you picture this drawing right here, imagine this being your living room and this being the spare bedroom that gets used mm -hmm. once or twice a year. Right. Okay, or vice versa. So you could actually, in theory, keep this room at 60, 65 or whatever and still be very comfortable in this room by using the floor heat. So you just use it when you need it. It's the same with where that need it and where you need it as well right. at the right temperature. Yeah, and that's how floor heating lets you zone your house to, to warm the areas you want to be in. And that's one of the the main, I think, uh, misrepresentations uh, in some ways, for lack of a better word, is people think it's very expensive to use this as a form of heating. But when you're heating only what you need and you can 
actually heat uh, a few degrees lower because you're not losing uh, the, um, what's that? Uh, the you're you're not heat. getting the heat loss right, as right. fast as you would with a forced air. It actually is more energy efficient. You're warmer at a few degrees cooler right. than a traditional furnace. And there's a great video. There's a couple of great videos on YouTube where they actually, you know, you, you always have these people that do hardcore things, right? So this person didn't want to heat their house except exactly where they were. Okay. So they were actually using localized heat. So they would make it warm from five to nine in their living room. Then at nine o'clock, it would start heating up in their bedroom and the bedroom would get warm. And then the living room would get cold again. That's so wild. they're simply just heating the area that they're going to be in. And it's That's great cool. for basements and that sort of stuff that you don't use all the time. Cool. All right. So that's radiant heat in general. Today, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about uh, the application for floating uh, wood floors or laminate or even carpet. Right. And so this is our environ system. Um, it It is it is a heating element, but it's uh, a little different from some of, of our other products. So talk about what makes this system unique. This system doesn't need to be embedded in thin set or self-leveling. It can mm -hmm. simply be installed in layers between parts of your floor. So what happens is this doesn't glue to anything and nothing glues to this. Okay. So you think of anything that floats or that it would be under like carpet. Carpet is only tacked around the edges. That's right. So this can be in the middle where it floats between the pad and the carpet. This can also be laminate. You have an underlayment. You put the heat product here, the environment, then you put the laminate or engineered wood or whatever that is directly on top of that. Yeah. So it's just heating wire that's embedded in um in a foil in foil and what that foil does it helps spread the heat out and what this does is it lets you cut and turn because the loops as you can yeah, see yeah i was going to ask visible. if you could yeah yeah and what you do is you simply pull the loop up a little bit and that allows you to cut that section and turn it so it's very flexible mm -hmm. and uh, it can kind of adapt to the room as a result it's good for fi for filling rooms that aren't exactly square too nice so easy to cut and turn, foil backed. It's uh, used for any floating wood system. If it has to be embedded, uh, for example, there's luxury vinyl tile. A lot of people are, were asking questions about luxury uh, vinyl tile. What was the other system they were asking about? It's, it's all LVT derivatives. Yeah. LVT with stone, uh, stone bits ground up into it, SPC right. core, that sort of stuff. That's all treated as an LVT type system. And that is a system that would not be used with environment. Because that is embedded in self-leveling usually mm -hmm. because you need it embedded. You need a nice smooth surface so that you can glue down or um, inst or float the laminate over it. And what's good too is a lot of um, laminate or luxury or, vinyl yeah, tile. Let right. me correct that. A lot of um, laminate companies and other type of companies, they will say, what's, what's the deflection or what, what is the, um, uh, the rise of the rise of the floor using this product. A lot of them are three sixteenth every ten feet. Mm -hmm. Well, this product is a little bit thinner than three sixteenths, except for one spot, and that's the factory splice that's right at the beginning of the mat. Can't really see it on this image. Yeah, I can't really see it here, but there's going to be a little bit of a lump here. Mm -hmm. That all you have to do is take some of the underlayment out underneath it and allow it to sink down. Okay. So this should get you a, uh, to be able to comply with your laminate manufacturer's requirements of three sixteenths, except for that one spot. You just plan for that. You take this underlayment out a little bit there, and then that'll make it the same level. Yeah. So the one thing about this product is it is not used usually in bathrooms. We do get some people that by mistake, they'll, they'll order this for bathrooms, but this is usually used in another type of room. It's usually some type of bedroom, a basement. Mm -hmm. um, so... We always say about this product is water resistant, yeah. but not waterproof. Right. And one of the questions that, that L sent in was, you know, how much uh, is the floor raised with the heating system? About and you, less than three sixteenths, yeah. except for that one spot. And you know that now you just simply plan for that one spot and you should be able to comply with that requirement. And then the other uh, question that, that we received was, you know, can this be used as a primary heat source? Now, I know the answer to that because I live with this product, but let's see if Scott knows. Well, the way you determine it is you go to our website, warmlyyours.com, and there's a heat loss calculator. Mm -hmm. there. And that heat loss calculator will let you design your room. You tell it what the R values are in your walls, how many exterior walls you have, if you have any windows, mm -hmm. if you have any skylights or or uh, fireplaces, stuff like that. And what you do is you simply build your room, telling it what R values are in your walls, your floor, and your ceiling. And then that program will tell you how many BTUs you need to heat it. Then it takes the amount of BTUs our product will supply, 
and then it says yes you have plenty or no you might be just a little bit short and maybe you go buy a space heater for that one day where it's 20 below zero right and i live in illinois i have this product in my bedroom and i use it as a primary heat source so so yes it can work and the heat loss calculator will tell you that there you go all right why you can install it in a day what day why is it super super fast it's super super fast because you don't have to use any thin set you don't have to use any glue you don't have to wait for them to set no up drying time, no drying no time curing time nope okay nope it's it's great for that fast installation you just roll it out cut it turn it rotate it around and once again you never ever cut the cables yeah. you simply cut the aluminum foil and allow it to move and what that does is that allows you to just install that floor really, really fast. So you have an underlayment there. Usually it's cork or something similar to that. Mm -hmm. You lay that out and we're going to show you a picture of it here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you just make one layer, you put the heat on top of that layer, and then you put the flooring on top of that layer. Nice. It's like making a cake. Nice. So talk about the cake. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. All right. So the, uh, well, one more down. One more down. Yeah. So give me that those layers, if you don't mind. Right. We're always going to ask you when you're heating your space, what's the subfloor mm -hmm. and what is your flooring type going to be? Because then we're going to tell you over our years of experience what these layers are in between. So you tell us what the bread is and we'll tell you what the fillings are, mm -hmm. right? So um, we have a floating floor here. Are you hungry? Yeah, I just <laughs> ate. <laughs> So we have the floating floor here. We have the um, environ system right below it. That's the heating element, folks. Yep. And then you have the cork as your underlayment. And then there is your plywood subfloor. Now, the cork is an underlayment. Does it also have an R value? Does it make the system a little more energy efficient? Yes. Scott? Yes, it does. It has an R value of 0.75. Yeah. So it's good at making the heat go upwards as opposed to going downward. Uh, remember, we're dealing with radiant electricity here. So if you take a look and you let's say that this is the wire the heat goes around the wire okay in all directions right hot air rises but this heat is generated in a circle around that wire so what you want to do is you want to make that heat that's coming out below it actually force it to go up exactly and that's what this does and it also lets you it also gives a layer of give so people will ask, can I put this directly on plywood? Can I put this directly yeah. on concrete? If you're looking to save costs, can you do that? No, because you have to have one soft surface for it to be against. Okay. So if you have a hard flooring, there's its hard surface that it can be against. It can only be against one hard surface. The other surface oh. has to have relief because otherwise it'll, as you walk over, it'll braid the wire Okay. and you don't want it to do that. So the cork allows the, the um, cable to actually sink down into the cork to give it some relief if you notice we talk about the room that we did at your house yeah actually when you put it in at first it feels kind of like you're on something but then after about a week it or two settles. it settles down yeah. yeah absolutely and that's that cable settling down into the cork interesting okay well explained i try you're hired okay <laughs> all right so um this is, is this my bedroom i think we're going to yes. be talking about mm -hmm. so okay great so this is it's a very nice size bedroom i love it there i spend a lot of time there sleeping uh so 370 square feet um the cork coverage is always 100 mm -hmm. i would assume yep. and then the total heated area 270 square feet there are areas that we don't recommend that you heat for example maybe under a bed right. or any uh, anything that has a base cabinet, we would recommend that you not heat. So you're rarely heating 100% uh, of the room. We also recommend that you stay a foot or two off the wall. Um, usually I have people travel the room, walk it, travel mm -hmm. it, and really think about where you want that heat to be. Uh, so uh, that's why the heated area, as you can see, is a little less than the actual uh, room area. And Jeff has a great question. Is yeah. how thick should the cork be? Well, the cork that we sell is six millimeters, which is just a little bit. It's right around a quarter of an inch. Yeah. So it's six millimeters, quarter inch. Um, if, if you buy it from us, it's the stuff that's rated for using as a flooring underlayment. Yes. Please keep in mind, if you try to go out and find it somewhere else, if you buy it on a great big roll, you need to make sure you're not buying the stuff that's used for bulletin boards. I've seen that. Yeah, because bulletin board cork it's is much very, different. very, very fine. Yeah, and yeah. it's also very squishy. Yeah. And it's not rated to be an underlayment, where ours is more firm. It's got more pellets per square inch that makes it, gives it a more firm feel, gives you more R value. Yeah, good question, Jeff. I hope that answers it for you. 
So now we see what the operating cost is per hour. Yeah, per I mean, hour. once we know how yeah. much the, the total heated coverage, the one thing that we like to do is we really want to provide you an engineered solution. And what that means is we're going to give you all the details. And the biggest detail that you really want to focus on above and beyond the comfort, where do you want that heat is the electrical side of things. You want to understand the power requirements. Talk about that part. Why is it important? Well, because the more area you heat, the more power it takes. Mm -hmm. And anything over 120 square feet, you're going to move into 240 volt mm -hmm. because our thermostats only switch 15 amps. So you have to keep that in mind. So what we did here is, is you can, if you're not using this as a sole source of heat, yeah. you're simply adding it for comfort when you get out, when you want to walk on the floor, make the room a little bit warmer. <laughs> maybe keep your feet warm when you're walking on the laminate because laminate or wood can feel cold, especially in the winter time, is you can pull the, just like Julia said, you can pull the coverage from the walls because first of all, no one ever stands right up against the wall. True. So if you're just looking for comfort, you're never going to stand there. You don't need the heat there. Yeah. So that's why we always say walk around in the room because you want to make sure that the part you're heating is the part you're walking and places where you don't walk, you can kind of economize and bring that coverage in away from there. Especially with a roll that you can cut and right. churn. Exactly. You have that flexibility. Yep. Yeah. That's what's so great about the system is if you're if you're if you're using it for sole source of heat, you want to try to fill the room as much as you can. If Agree. you're simply looking for comfort, you can cut your costs operating and the upfront costs mm -hmm. by simply pulling it away from places you don't want. And as you can see, this is 13.6 amps, uh, 3,240 watts. So it does fit very nicely um, on our thermostats. They go up to 15 amps. 15 amps, right. Mm -hmm. So we were able to get this on one control, which could be also another factor in deciding your coverage. And we walk you through all of this right you'll get a design plan because here's what we received here's the first thing we got okay this was the, the design of the room this is my room yep and what you see is uh whenever you're dealing with this type of product is in a, in a bedroom like this some bedrooms people like to move the beds into different positions not but, me but some bedrooms that bed is always going to be in that spot yeah so that's the first question you ask okay we're going to fill this room is the bed always going to be in one place they say yes okay then we can figure don't heat under that area because yeah, no one's ever going, yeah, no one's ever going to walk there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I were to want to move that bed in the future, we would heat under there. Exactly. And that would be fine as long as it doesn't have a base bottom, I would assume. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. bed has a lot of clearance, so I could have heated under. You but I, I decided not to. But you know what you costs. would what you would have done if you'd done that? You would have gone into another control. Because See, you there would have you go gone, back you to would, that electrical. You would have gone over 15 amps, and then you would have needed another line, mm -hmm. another control of some sort, or a, or a, a power module. Um, so just by taking that little part off of the room, you saved yourself a bunch of money. Yeah, let's go back to the electrical. So we give you the total watts, the amps. We even uh, make a requirement for the breaker. Of course, your electrician has final say. But the one other thing is that operating cost. Uh, cannot attend live, try to create password. Oh, that's, oh, that's something else. Okay, okay, good. So operating costs, uh, we like to put that information front and center. And the reason for that is, again, most people think this is very expensive mm -hmm. to operate, and it isn't. As you can see, this is a nice size room, and it's 11 cents per hour. And that's only in the evening, because that's the only time I'm using it. So my, my heating out, my floor is turned on around 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, I'm usually not in bed until 10 but my husband gets up there earlier so i have to take that into consideration for the schedule and then it goes off at 6 a.m in the morning because we're all pretty much up and out of the house right so it's going to cost you that 11 cents per hour of yes, operation exactly right. and that's it so it's pretty inexpensive so let's take a look at this what we got from right. the drawing wise okay here are the closets so in this space here. why are these dimensions important? Let's talk about that because we we ask people to send in a plan, a project sketch, and we want that information explained to everyone out there why that's important. Because we need to know how much material goes in there. Because if we send you a roll that's designed to fill 100 square feet, if all of a sudden you really only have 80, you now have a product that you can't install because you can't cut it or shorten it. Yeah, never cut or shorten the heating element. The return power lead you can cut, mm -hmm. uh, but never the heating element. It's actually against code to do so. Correct. So, 
So are you ready to look at the transformation? Yeah, let's see All what right. you got. So you send in a sketch, we send you back this. Now, that's pretty. It's mm -hmm. got a lot of nice colors. Walk me through it. Well, what we do is we, this is our smart plan and we have training sessions on how to use a smart plan. Yeah. If you're interested in joining us for any of those, we, we have, do those during the week. Yeah. So uh, we have the mats uh, that are rolls that are numbered, roll number one, roll number two, and roll number three. These triangles are all where they start. And the reason why they all start here is because the thermostat's right here. Yep. And then you can see the bed. Nothing's under the bed. We we purposefully go around that mm -hmm. with the roll. And we color code it just so it's it's easier to follow. Right. And there are no there's no one going to be standing along here. There's no need to heat this area. So we've got this dimension all the way around the room pretty much um, that's that's going to be non-heating. So we even show how far off the wall to start mm -hmm. the, yep. the, uh, the, the heating element, right. these, the that's laying what these, out of the heating element. That's what these numbers are. These mm -hmm. numbers are how, how far this will rest from the wall edge, mm -hmm. okay? So you need to tell us where you want the thermostat. So if we go back one drawing, so, we can see that the thermostat okay. has been marked here. This is where all the switches are. This is where we want the thermostat. Right. So if we look on the plan, there's our thermostat. Brilliant. So if we go back to the sketch, we need accurate dimensions. We need to know where the thermostat is. What else do we need to know? We need to know if there's any floor vents. Okay. Now, why is that important? Because if there's a floor vent here, we can't roll the heat out over it. Right. right? So we need to stay away from that. Okay. So floor vents, anything else you can think of? Anything that's got a boxed bottom, you wouldn't want to heat underneath. Okay. Uh, anything that's permanent. So if you had a permanent... If I had bookcases. Book, yeah, if you had a bookcase here that was going to be like a built-in, right. you'd never ever put heat under a built-in object like that. Because it would trap it, and then over time, it's probably going to fail, Right. the heating element. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the layout. It's very important that you review these layouts, review the dimensions, dimensions change. Um, but what we send you is exactly going to fit this area. So if there are changes and it's after you receive the product, not a problem, send it back to us. We'll re-engineer the plan. Once you give us updated dimensions, we can have that back to you within hours sometimes. Uh, 24 hours is the longest. And so we can save a lot of problems right at the front end of things. And if you're out in the field and you're installing this and you're going, oh, it's not following the plan. Well, the great thing about this product is very flexible. Yeah. So instead of doing a four foot six run and then turning it back, let's say I've got to use, I have too much at the end. Mm -hmm. I can make this a, um, a five foot run. Right. And then a five foot run and a five foot run. That'll help you some of that up. So you can, um, you can move the stuff around mm -hmm. and it's very flexible because you can cut and turn it. So if you get to the case where, okay, I've got to re, I've, I've got something to do here. This is a good thing about having a bunch of extra space. If you have too much cable, or if you don't have enough, you can then make this a five foot run, a five foot four run, et cetera. You can shorten them to put it into areas where you need it. Yeah. But let us do that for you. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, if, if you get to, to a point where it's not working, give our tech support team a call. We're here for you. Yeah. Well, sometimes they call us on the weekends. And we just simply have to walk them through about, you know, we'll take a look at this plan and yeah. go, okay, well, you can shorten this one. You can lengthen this one. And so you actually you on the fly, you yes. can show them how to redesign it. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Uh, the one thing we do like to, to show is the cost. Again, that's another concern that people have. Um, so this is three rolls. So 2,200 for the heating element and then the control, the controls can be as inexpensive as 150 and mm -hmm. and this as expensive as 250 so you have a range there and even including the cork and the tester um, to make sure the heating element elements is not damaged during install it's three thousand dollar project mm -hmm. so not bad for that size room very affordable affordable luxury yes exactly and it's going to be warm yeah okay all right, so we we did have a question. Uh, someone said, how do you find, no, this is Cindy. How do you find out what is wrong and where the problem is when it is not working? Well, this is one of the things that we have you do on the front end, so that doesn't happen. Right. And then we can talk about, well, what if you don't test and you do have a problem? How, how do we work through that? But the one thing that Scott loves to talk about is testing, testing, testing. Because then you know each step of the way whether you've completed it correctly or not. Mm -hmm. So the last thing you want to do is you you don't want to have something, you don't want to drop a knife on the mat when you're putting it in. Then you go ahead and continue installing it. 
put the floor down mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, okay, well, we, let's check it out and see what happened. Uh, then you have a problem. The idea is to test it as soon as you get it. Yeah. Because if you get the product today and you're going to be installing it next Monday, you can test it today. And if something's wrong with it that happened between our factory and your home, you can say, hey, I just opened this up. Something's wrong with it. It gives us time to get you another one right. because you don't want to do that the day of your installation. Yeah. I mean, we test 100% of our products, so we know it's working before it leaves our warehouse, but stuff happens in between. And a lot of times these are on a job site. Uh, and there's a lot of people in and out. There's a lot of tools. There's a lot of equipment in and out. So you test it when you get it. Then after you cut and turn it, you lay it out. When you're laying it out, doing your cuts and turns, you attach the circuit check to it yes. to make sure. It, and if it screams at you, whatever you just did caused the problem. Mm -hmm. So the circuit check is going to be a device that is going to yell at you when something happens that you don't want to happen. It's your alarm. It's alarming. So we need to figure out what's going on. So it's telling you stop. Whatever you just did, stop at this point. Give us a call and let's figure it out. Yes. Um, and the next thing is, is once you get it, cut it and turn, then you take the circuit check off, you test the product again, and you wanna make sure it's good before you start putting your flooring on top of it. Right, you don't don't wanna be pulling that back up. Right, so we've tested it, we know it's good, we lay it out, we do our tests, we know that when we laid it out, we did it correctly, no mm -hmm. problems. Then we put the flooring on and then we test it again. Mm -hmm. So we've tested it three, three times, times yeah. and we know everything is good. Three times the charm. Yep, so that's exactly- And you exactly need that for your warranty as well. Exactly. I mean, we're going to warrant it, but we'd love to have that information for your warranty. Right. And this tool here, it, you can get one of these for under $15. They do not cost that much money. There's no reason not to get one of these. Units. And your electrician should have one of those exactly. handy. Yeah. All right. So we've, we've gone over the project. We've talked about the electrical component of it. We've talked about how much it actually costs, how much it costs to operate and the product itself. Now let's get nitty gritty on the install. Cause I think folks really want to understand what are the steps involved. So we're going to start the sandwich. Uh, we're going to start at the subfloor, work our way up. Yeah. So what is, what's going on is you now have um, these two by four pieces or two by two pieces or however they're currently shipped and they're going to arrive and you are going to just lay them out like a brick pattern. So if we look at the sandwich, let's go back to that. The first thing we're doing is that cork underlayment. Right. So we have the subfloor, we're doing cork at this point and that was part of the quote as you can see and you're laying that out on the floor in a brick like pattern. So you can click back on 14. There you go. One more time. Good. Perfect. So brick like pattern. Why is that? Why is that important? So you don't have two seams separating all the time. Mm -hmm. So you have a seam. Of course, you're going to have a seam here. Not much you can do about this one. But notice how there's not continuous seams everywhere. They're all kind of offset like laying bricks in a house. Okay. That way it tends to hold together a little bit better. And if you're really concerned, you can put a piece of tape across like it's duct tape here mm -hmm. to hold the pieces not together. a problem yeah because i mean you don't you don't want the cork to be shoved up against all four walls you want it to have a quarter of an inch just like you're doing your laminate mm -hmm. you want to have some give there because cork will expand and contract a little bit the mm. more more humidity it has or the, the hotter it gets so you have to have a little bit of that so there's going to be a little gap around your edges mm -hmm. and there are going to be no gaps here and by making them so you don't have the seams going in a, in a fixed pattern, they tend not to pull apart. All right, cool. And we already talked about the, the fact that uh, it does have R values, so there, it does act as an insulator. Uh, anything else we should mention? Yeah, we need to talk. When we lay out the product, we need to get the, the heating products going to be out here, right? Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is we need to get the power from the cold lead here to the heating product. By, by the thermostat. Yeah, so if let's say the thermostat was on this wall, mm -hmm. we would then trench out about oh i don't know a little less than a half an inch trench mm -hmm. from the wall over to where the mat starts okay and that lets that cold lead rest in the recess between the subfloor and the flooring that way you don't have the teeter-totter effect going nice. over that cable another reason why it's important to have the cork yep okay all right so we've got the cork is down it does that's floating, mm -hmm. so it doesn't need any cure time. So again, fast, done in a day. Uh, the next thing is to install the heating element 
per plan. Right. And you lay it out. You do your cuts and turns. The most important thing is what I do is I take the smart plan and I start measuring with the tape and a marker, making sure that each one of those runs that's shown on the plan will fit in the room. So you do a pre-fit, if you will. Yeah. So okay. Because I don't want to cut it before I have to. So right. I'm going to make sure that it's all going to fit because if that way I know that if it doesn't fit, for some reason, a room is shrunk, mm -hmm. which tends to happen <laughs> between when it's ordered and when you get it. And if it gets smaller, I'm going to find out, hey, I can't even install this anyway. It's the, the dimensions have changed. That way we can then get another product out to you. You can send it back. The thing is, if you go and you cut it all up and it go, oh, no, it doesn't fit, then you yeah. kind of shot yourself in the foot there. So you don't want to do that. So, so Trish wants to know, Trisha, sorry, uh, wants to know um, if she spills water on the floor, happens, um, how safe is it? And is it going to damage the product? Well, probably, depending on the flooring you use, it probably won't even get through the flooring. Right. And if it does, remember the, the wires are, are water resistant. Exactly. Um, you can not worry about that. And let's say for some reason, if the wire got dinged when it got installed and you didn't know it and water hit it, the thermostat would kick off right away anyway because it's got built-in GFCI protection. Right. And I think that's, that's you know, it's like three levels of safety yeah, there. Yeah. So it's very hard, one, to get to the product. Uh, and then two, um, it's encased mm -hmm. in, in foil. And then three, um, if there is any type of nick or damage to the cable, the GFCI is going to trip uh, within five milliamps. Milli Yep. milliseconds milli well it's a milliamp if it yeah. if it notices that the that the that the amount of power that's going in is not matching what's coming out it says oops i've lost a little bit and boom it'll shut off and in a bat of an eyelash yeah, oh, yeah. It, it it will shut off so it's very safe uh trust me i spill things in my room all the time and if you take a look at this you can see the cable's actually under a, another layer of foil so um you're going to see that it's going to be very difficult for that water to get through through and then back up and under. So yeah. it's a, it, I can tell you that no one has ever, it's, it's never happened. Yeah. In 20 <laughs> years. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the other thing that we need to worry about before we put our flooring down. Let's say we, we I, I do want to go back to this one sure. because if you look here, you can actually see the cables as they pass through. Mm -hmm. Well, the idea here is to make sure that you don't have the cables overlapping, overlapping, Okay. or getting real close that's kind of like why we've offset these so you have one here one here one here they're not hitting one another like that mm -hmm. so make sure that this product is one side up because you want the cables to be you don't want the cables visible after it's installed the cable and it is marked down. yes the, this the, side the, so the product is installed face down um and it, it that is clearly marked and we design it that way as well mm -hmm. so so I'm now glad, I'm glad you covered that. Yeah, I, I almost forgot. Yeah. But one thing you do have to remember before you put your flooring in is that you have to take the thermostat sensor out of the box. And this is important because the sensor is really connected to the thermostat. Um, so um, it's not it's not on the heating element. So a lot of people are not aware of that. Um, the sensor is in the same box as the control. So a lot of people will get that control. They'll put it in one place, the heating element in another place. And then when they go to install the heating element, they are not even aware that mm -hmm. a sensor is involved. So uh, it's one thing that we reinforce, in, you know, in every person that we talk to that that is going to be purchasing this product. You have to install that sensor. Talk about why the sensor is especially important when we're talking about wood, laminate, engineered wood type flooring. All those products usually have a temperature limit. Right. that the manufacturer doesn't want you to heat over that number. So if you have a temperature limit of 85 of this particular product, there's no way you're going to know what the floor temperature is unless the sensor is in here. Exactly. And this why this is why this system is so much better than hot water because a hot water system nine times out of 10 doesn't even have a sensor in the floor. So you're talking about hydronic uh, heating. Right just for those those folks out there. So there's two methodologies. One is using hot water, the other is with electric. And basically what you're saying is with electric, you have much tighter control because of the sensor of the temperature of the flooring. Right. Whereas with hydronic? All they're doing is they're doing BTU calculations. How much hot water am I going to pump in this at this temperature is going to make the air temperature this warm? Right. Well, there's, there's no, there's no um, calculation for how, how hot is the floor actually going to get. So a lot of manufacturers of, of the flooring will say, well, it's okay to use with water. 
and and we, you better check with electric. But electric is actually the safest thing to do because right. we can keep that temperature within one degree or less than Very one degree. Very tightly controlled. And, and hot water tends to roller coast. Yeah. It, go, it gets hot, it gets cold, it gets hot, it gets cold. This product is the temperature is kept within, I think it's a half a degree of Fahrenheit. So it's very, very tight control. Very but consistent. The one thing you have to do is you need to make sure you put the sensor in the right place. Right. Now that we're just showing you, it doesn't look this like that. X -ray yeah, vision. This is x-ray vision, but usually you want that sensor about six inches into the heating element, never touching the heating elements because you're going to get false readings there right in the center center. And then that sensor is connected to the back of the thermostat. Right. So. And you never, ever put that sensor wire in the same conduit. If you have to use conduit, you don't put it in the same conduit as the leads that are supplying the power to the floor. Right. So that heating element has a return power lead. That's how it gets electrified. Uh, so that those return power leads, well, in this case, there would be three. Yeah, that's, we've got a drawing that's going to show this. Okay, here. great. So we'll, we can talk about that more. But the return power leads are connected to the thermostat. The sensor is connected to the thermostat. And we'll, we'll show an overview of that as well. That sensor is very important. Yeah, and the, 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 com the most common problems with the sensor is, it's, one, it's forgotten. Yep. Two, it ends up being under the wire. And if it's yeah. directly touching the wire, the, the wire gets warm so fast it does. that if the sensor is resting right on it, as soon as that starts to heat up, the sensor will say, okay, it's hot, Click and it'll shut off. And it goes on, off, on, off, on, off, and it never warms. And then, and then folks are, are sharing, hey, it's not getting as warm as I thought it would, or it's not warming at all. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's related to either the sensor is not there or it's in the wrong position. And the other thing is, with floor sensors, two, two kind of um, mis, uh, misnomers when it comes to this. Sometimes the, the installer will put the sensor out over here. Not, not, not under the heating not wire. Not under the heating wire. So this area, the, the heat only travels an inch and a half. Right. So if you put the sensor over here, it's always going to show whatever the room temperature cold. is. Cold. It's going to show cold. Yeah. And meanwhile, this is going to be on all the time because it's, blast. it keeps trying to heat it up, yeah. right? So you need to make sure it's here. And the other thing is that people do is I need to make this the sensor wire longer because I need to get it out into the middle of the floor. No. You don't need to get it out into the middle of the floor. You simply need to get it into the edge, six to eight inches in this edge between two of the wires. It doesn't need to run out in the middle of the room. Yeah, good points. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're at the point where we're installing the floating wood floor. As they're doing that, you're recommending that that circuit check is always on mm -hmm. to make sure that there's no damage. I would assume there. maybe you're using a tool to install this and it could be a potential uh nick that could have happened i'm usually, sure it's rare but usually it's a hammer yeah and the problem with hammers is they have claw claws on the back of them to pull mm -hmm. um nails mm -hmm. if you drop that uh, hammer on one of the wires you can dent it mm -hmm. and you can compress it and and cause a failure so that's one thing you want to watch out for and that's why it's important to have that circuit check on there yeah because if you all of a sudden you're ready to hit it and you drop your hammer and it goes beep then right. you know that that just hit a wire. So Stop, do not pass go, call us 24 seven and we will help you through it. Exactly. Yeah. So we're gonna test it and then we can start putting this stuff over. And once we put it mm -hmm. over, we then test it again. And very easy to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's easy cause I'm not doing it. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and this is what you were talking about with the, the wiring diagram. So there's the heating element um, at, the, at the base, right? And then mm -hmm. you have a box there. Does that box need it? The box is recommended if you have like two or three different rolls because right. those three rolls are going to have three leads and it's hard to get those three leads up into this pipe into the back of the thermostat. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden your connection to the thermostat is actually three wires on each terminal instead of one. So what a lot of people do is when they use two or more of these mats. Which is, is the case in this, mm -hmm. this actual room, this application. Yep. So what we did is we ran these three leads mm -hmm. into this box. Okay. And you have a hot, a neutral, and there, there's no polarity in the mat, so you really don't have to worry about it. You mm -hmm. just have the two circuit wires and the third ground. So what you do is you just, one's yellow, one's red, one's black, and one's a ground. You tie all three reds together, mm -hmm. and you put it on one terminal inside the box. Mm -hmm. You run all the three all blacks, the blacks together, together, right? and you tie them together. And then the grounds, the three grounds get tied together. Mm -hmm. And that way you have one piece of Romex that's a, a three conductor, two for the 
circuit and one for the ground. And that way you tie those down here and then you run one piece of Romex up to the back of the thermostat. Right. It makes that a very nice, easy, clean connection there at the back. Well, very elegant. And but you can get optional, nice, you only, yeah. if you have one roll, maybe you don't need it. You don't need it. Nope. And a lot of these installs are one roll because we have we have a great variety of sizes. Mm -hmm. So we can usually do it with one roll. So you want to make sure that this gets installed per mm -hmm. your local electric code. Mm -hmm. Some uh, electric codes may require that an electrician, there's very few states that do this, but some states do require that the electrician actually lay the product out. Mm. Okay. So that's what you want to look. You want to ask your, your local code your local official, code, yeah. hey, do I need to do, can I lay this out? Nine times out of 10, anybody can lay the product out. Anybody right. can lay lay the product out. But what you might want to do and probably get the wires up the conduit, but your electrician is going to be the person yeah. that connects the house wiring to that thermos. And yeah, we always recommend that. You want to have that circuit breaker turned off. Mm -hmm. And uh, ideally, someone who knows what they're doing with the electricity. Now, this wire here, this is for the sensor, correct? Right. And you can see there's a separate tube yep. going up. So there's the tube that the sensor wire is going up, and this is the tube that though that high power wire is going up. Okay, excellent. The return power lead, mm -hmm. which you can cut. Yes. Okay. Good. Good illustration. Yep. I like that. All right. So the last thing is to install the thermostat. You have a variety of options here at Warmly Yours for that, um, but it's fairly simple. You mm -hmm. you know the so talk about the back of the control uh, and any any. Any tips, anything that you've learned along the way to make this a little easier or foolproof? What made this job a lot easier to do is this, that we actually ran THHN wire mm -hmm. from the back of the thermostat down the wall to that junction box. I have no clue. So that's not Romex. You, Romex is usually a plastic wire that's got all three lines built into the same thing. Okay. But these are just two separate, actually three separate runs of THHN wire, which most electricians will use. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a nice, simple connection at the back. Okay. These wires will go to the load wires in the back. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the power wires coming in from your circuit breaker that attach to the other two terminals. Mm -hmm. Very clean. It's like wiring a light switch. You don't have to worry about using wire nuts or anything like that. It can be installed in a, in a single gang box, which in the old days, we always recommended a double gang box. But now these particular They're units smaller, yeah. are smaller. Yeah. They have less wire in the box, so you can use a smaller box. And they don't heat up like the old units exactly. used to. So yeah. it's good news. So Great technology. Th this is what you are doing. But the one thing that we didn't mention that you want to make sure that you don't have yeah. is you don't want a GFI breaker. Okay. So why not? Because the GFCI control is built into the thermostat. What if I have one at the breaker and one in the thermostat? Do they conflict somehow? Yes. Okay. And then your floor will have a GFI error coming on. Constantly? Uh, nuisance trips. It all okay. depends. And also, we always always suggest it's on the, same, on the same circuit, especially for people that are putting it in bathrooms. Because bathrooms, um, you never, ever want to put it on the same circuit as the lights and the fan. Because I guarantee you, if you put it on the same circuit as your exhaust fan, when you turn that nuisance fan off, tripping. you're going to nuisance strip your floor and then it'll yeah. be cold. Yeah. So um, so that's good news because a, those, those GFCI breakers are really expensive. Not too bad, but they're no? about double. I mean, it's yeah. like fifteen dollars or twenty. You know. Oh, well, that is yeah, because so regular breakers are pretty inexpensive. I thought they were like a hundred dollars. <throat> oh no, 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 no. That's for snow melt. That's for oh, outdoors. Okay. So um, these these are really low cost. I mean, we're adding really no cost to your electrical yeah. because the the protection you need is going to be in your thermostat. Love it. So the one thing you have to we haven't talked about when it comes to this type of product is I don't know if we're going to talk it about. Yeah, yep, we're, definitely. We're going to talk about it here. But the one thing that a lot of people, um, when they're installing this type of flooring, they don't realize that they're actually dealing with a natural product like wood. So we're talking about laminates. We're talking about engineered wood. And any of those things yeah. will expand and contract. Based on? Based on relative humidity. Okay. So not necessarily heat. When you heat something, it does tend to expand Absolutely. a little bit. Yeah. But if you have a floor at home that has no heat on it, and in the summertime, it buckles like this, and in the wintertime, it comes apart like mm -hmm. that, that's because it has too much humidity or it doesn't have enough humidity. Yeah, I have in, my, in one uh, of my rooms, I have gapping uh, that happens in the wintertime whether there's heat under it or not. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And my hallway, I've got it laminated in my hallway. It's not mm -hmm. heated. Mm -hmm. And in the wintertime, it gaps. Mm -hmm. And in the summertime, it peaks up. 
and that's really related to humidity. Humidity, right? So, and um, what? But all of these manufacturers really do have temperature reg regulations or requirements. They also have relative humidity requirements. Yes. That no one ever talks about. Mm -hmm. So if you are thinking about installing uh, this type of flooring, you're going to need to think about. I probably need a dehumidifier in the summer, mm -hmm. and I probably need humidification in the in the in the winter, mm. because they'll usually say you have a range between forty and sixty percent. You want it to run in there. Well, in the winter time, we all know if you have forced air, you're probably down around twenty percent mm -hmm. relative humidity. And the summertime, if you don't have your AC on all the time, could be seventy percent. Yeah. So that's and, something that you have to talk about that no one ever really brings up. And one of the things I like to bring up when it relates to that is wood loves a constant temperature. And radiant floor heating actually achieves that for the wood flooring. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's why they pair so well. Uh, but you do want to make sure that you uh, program your thermostat. We can walk you through that as well. You want to make sure you get that temperature uh, requirement, that max temperature. And as you can see, the thermostat has that already built in, laminate 82 degrees. You can uh, talk with your manufacturer. Some recommend 80, some recommend 84. You, you can just it customize right it yourself mm -hmm. or just keep it at the default at 82 degrees. Yeah, and that's what you're going to do. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is also look and see if your flooring manufacturer has a maximum deviation per day. Mm. So can the flooring, is it unlimited? Can it be 10 degrees cooler in the night and 10 degrees warmer during the day? Mm -hmm. Or do they want it to be within three degrees all the time? So then you'd have to keep it on. All, the, all time. the time. And you can definitely lower the temperature, yeah. but you just want that constant temperature. So usually some sometimes it's two or three degrees per day. So especially when you're starting it off in the fall, mm -hmm. you ramp it up two degrees every day until you get it to where you want it. And I have seen that. Yep. Yeah. And then you leave it there. And then the under hardwood that we did um, at, at another house locally is then in the springtime, they turn it down three you degrees ramp it down, every right. day until it gets to be off. Yeah. Okay. So Good always tips. keep, yeah, always keep that in mind that it's, it's not always temperature. A lot of times it's a relative humidity. Absolutely. And this is the finished room uh, with that flooring. It turned out beautifully. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy I did this room and it's warm. It's, it's very comforting, yep. cozy. So that's pretty much our presentation, folks. Do you have any questions or anything we can help you out with? You've got the expert here. Let's see. I'm going to make sure that we answered all the yeah, questions. Yeah, let's we got. do that. You want to run through that? Um, how do you find out what's wrong and that's, where the problem is? We, that's a good one. We, we talk can talk about, about that. Yeah, it, we have tools that allow you to locate the exact spot if you have a short. Mm -hmm. For some reason, if you got a short, we have a tools that will allow you to heat that short. And then we have a thermal camera that's available so you can see that see short. exactly where it is. So yeah. you can see exactly where the spot is in your floor. Lift up those pieces of wood make your repair we send the repair work. kits out yep. for you mm -hmm. and instructions we can even hold your hand and walk you through it if you want but fairly uh, fairly easy to to fix but i would recommend that an electrician do that repair what do, yes. what do oh, you absolutely. say yeah. yeah yeah because the tools use use high voltage so it's definitely an electrician thing but we can walk through any electrician on how to do it we do that all the time yeah, and uh, we just got a great question. Like, how long does it take to warm up? Usually the, um, about 40, 45 minutes, uh, you can really start to feel some warmth coming into the room. Uh, I like to put it on an hour before I'm going to be up there. Yeah, now, a lot, a lot of that, there's a lot of factors to take into consideration. The, how high the ceilings are, how, um, how, how, much, how many windows you have in the room. There happen to be a lot of wet windows in that bedroom. Um, is there a fireplace in the room? So you're going to, I would say, start with an hour and then you, you can play with it from there. But that would, I would start with an hour and I would start at 82 degrees floor temperature and, and see how it feels. Um, I, I actually find that 82 degrees is a little too warm for me, but um, other people might love that. But the, start with one hour, 82 degrees. What, that would be my recommendation. In fact, what would be yours? My recommendation is you don't even really have to worry about it. Because the thermostat oh, will it's figure, self -learning. Yeah, yeah, it's self-learning. So if you say, hey, I want this to be 80 degrees in mm -hmm. the morning, every morning I wake up, it will learn how long it takes to go Smart. from the cooler temperature to the warmer temperature. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to figure out anything at all. So what you do is just put at eight o'clock, I want it to be 82 and the thermostat will figure out how far in advance it has to start mm -hmm. to get it to that temperature. So really, you don't have to worry about it at all. You just tell yeah. it what you want the temperature to be when you're going to be on the floor, and it does the rest. You see, folks, that's why he heads up tech support. Good stuff.
Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, thanks, Tricia. Great question. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, I think that's it. We're going to uh, talk about some things that are coming up. We do this every month. Please come back and join us. Uh, March 12th, um, we're going to be talking about, uh, what is our next one? How to install floor heating system in less than a day for tile floors. Nice. We're going to mix it up. Yeah, and the days will get longer. So maybe that, I don't know, does that have anything? It's really cold out there now. I don't know. So we'll be back M March 12th to talk about that. The, just me and my buddy here. Mm -hmm. um, we um, also do daily training sessions. That's where uh, Scott was talking about earlier. You know, we can train you on how to use our online tools. Uh, we can just have a, a conversation. Join us at our live Q&As. It's very informal. Yeah, well, actually, we have them right out here on the screen. So like if on Mondays you wanted to join us, Mondays at 4 o'clock, it's about how electric floor heating works. Mm -hmm. Then on Tuesdays, we do how to build a radiant heating quote in five clicks. So there's a bunch of different topics that we talk about every day, yeah. and they rotate around too. So if you see anything that you're interested in, they're going to be on our website. Feel free to join us any of those times. Yeah, and if you have team members or staff that you want to get trained, this is a perfect way to do it because you really do have one-on-one -on -one time with an expert. Mm -hmm. And you do the tech one, which yeah. is what every what? Every Tuesday at seven at, at four p.m. seven p.m. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that okay. would not be good. <laughs> All right, and we like to do a special every month. It's it's totally cool that it's actually on the Environ uh, mats. So easy mats, twenty percent off this month. So check that out if you're really interested in this type of application. And then we value your feedback. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you want to hear, what you want to learn, and we will actually do it. Tell us what you think about the presentation. Do you like this guy? I don't know, you know, but let us know what you think. All right. Anything else we should talk about? Oh, get a hold of us if you need to. The buck stops here. Yeah. That's, that's my email, jbillin at warmlyyours.com. Please email me directly. I'm literally wired to my computer. I, I hate to say I'm kind of addicted. You know, people go to those those camps to like, you know, get get off of all of electronics. That would that would kill me. So you're going from a computer to just a <laughs> like a tablet. That'd be a great big step. <laughs> yeah. So, so email me um, directly. I'm happy to, to respond. I, um, I love email. I'm not so great at the phone, but call me as well. But my preferred form of communication is email. We're here 24 seven for you. Mm -hmm. If you do have some of those technical glitches that come up on the evenings and weekends, Scott's happy and his team is happy to help you out with that. But Anything yeah. else you want to add? No, I think that's about it. I think you did a good job. Well, I think you did too. Oh, all right. Well, until next time, please stay warm. And be radiant. <laughs> See you next time. We're working on it. <laughs> Pretty good stuff, huh? Yeah.